Yes. You walk in there. And it's that's what I like when when Planet Rock came out. Like every my world changed. Like I yes. remember living on 176th Street in the Bronx. Yeah. This came out and like everything changed. Like I'm yes. like, this is a real hip, like this hip hop song is bigger than the other hip hop songs that were on the radio. And now we're gonna get on the streets and, and dance to it. It was like Yeah. hmm But you know, and and, and honestly, <sighs> and this is a and this is a, a great point that I will say this. You growing up and being in the Bronx, you probably heard and was able to quantify this as hip hop before some of us in the other boroughs. Like I was I was vibing to it and doing it. And then it's like, oh, you know, this is hip hop. But on the onset, it just was, oh, this is the first time I'm hearing a song where I can follow along. It's making me dance. I'm seeing people that look like me. It's not R and B. I don't know what this is, but when I hear it in the park, everybody stops. Everybody was and this. then everybody moves, and so it was more so just a way of living that then gets defined. Like, oh, this is hip hop. Whereas for me, it's like, oh, people dance, people did graffiti, nah, people yeah. beatboxed, and it's like you had this music that just made you dance this- in a way that you just was invented as you was going along and other people were nicer than you, but you was just trying to be your best self and your crew. Like it was, it was magnetic, but we didn't fully yeah. understand what we were being drawn into because right. we're, we're 12, 13, 14 years old. Exactly. Like you didn't know what was happening, yep. but what we knew was something was happening and the music was book big enough to hit the radios it was big enough to hit the jams, the streets. Yes, yes. It was big enough to it was big enough to be anti-violence and anti-gang. Yes. Without it was a big doubt. Enough, it was big enough to make people want to be like creative and create art. Put yeah. art on, on the streets. Without a doubt. Yeah. It, I mean, and it, it's it, big it, enough it, to educate as well. Definitely. It was it was the the soundtrack for the block party. It was what made you know, and, and I grew up in a projects in Brooklyn and you had certain benches that was where the mothers was sitting and they would congregate. And you had other benches that was where the OGs were. And then the young people are running around. And for us, it was like, yo, if the music was playing, we were able to stay out late because you weren't alone. So there was this safety in just being able to run around as long as the music was playing so now you're able to reflect back and see all of these characteristics of what would make a great learning environment but you just knew like yo the street lights are on it's dark but the music is playing i can still run around i can play with my friends on the other side of the street there goes mrs johnson you know there goes mr jones and we're just having a great time until that last song and then it's like everybody goes home but they had an amazing and amazing time hey, hold on. we're gonna get to miss johnson the candy lady in a minute so here's what we're gonna do all right shout out to everybody who's joining us yes the big bang this is donique dolly I'm here, Dr. Donique Dolly, and I'm here with the one and, one and only Mr. Hip Hop Head, the visionary, one of the visionaries, <laughs> Timothy Jones, which yes, y'all yes. all know. So I'm just giving, the, you know, we're going to give flowers today, but also we're just going to talk this thing called hip hop education, hip hop no head. And uh, let me just give you the floor real quick and just say, yeah, what's up, good morning. Oh. Uh, first of all, good morning and everything, <laughs> wherever we are in the Big Bang world. Sal- Hello, salute to everyone to that is participating in, in Big Bang. Sh- shout out to Big Picture. As my brother just said, I'm Timothy Jones, Chief Visionary Officer of Hip Hop Ed, but born and raised in Brooklyn, a hip hop head. And that predates hip hop ed. And so we're just going to have a great time have a little conversation in the midst of the conversation you might hear some words that connect together like lego blocks because we was talking about planet rock and hip-hop so it would be blasphemous if we don't inject some lines that rhyme for your mind being inspired by the divine as we go past the margins and we beg your pardon but we telling truth to motivate the youth and i told y'all y'all could take a picture but there's only one big picture and you may pop but it's only one big bang r.i.p to biz and heavy d we got our own thing so let's get it 
Let's get it. And what you gonna hear today and see experience is this. I don't know if you think it's gonna be like, oh, we're gonna ask some questions and then we're gonna talk and whatever. <laughs> we gonna do what we do, right? So we're gonna do it like this. And this is what we we gonna I got the mic. I got we you see somebody's flowing there, you see that's happening. And we go into this sound that we're talking about, this sound that this thing that we we really talked about. <laughs> The bongos, baby. We're talking about the bongos. We're talking about hip hop. We're talking about this thing that happened. Yes. And it's, it, 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 it exploded. And it's yes. beautiful. That's what we're talking about. And we got some sounds that you know you might come out come your way. I and mean, it's happening in a different type of way. And let me just uh, let me just change the vernacular real quick and say it in this type of speech. What I'm actually saying is we're going to present something to you slightly innovative so you can understand how important hip hop is to us and how we are always thinking innovatively when it comes to a hip hop culture. We're also going to talk about education within that and how it has helped us as educators teach students and how it helps students understand the world and learn in general. So that's what we're going into. Now, going back into what I was getting into, changing my vernacular back, I'm going into <laughs> the, Timothy Jones. And I want to say, you know, Brother Timothy, it's been, it been fun building with you and talking Likewise. about this Likewise. process. Yes. And that's just what I want to get into for a second. Um, it's just like we have a connection. I haven't really even talked to you. I mean, seeing you in the face to face really or even build with you face to face, but I already know we're connected and you're a good brother because of the way you talk hip hop and the way you see things. So talk to me about that. I want to get to like, all right, how do we even have this appreciation for this thing called hip hop and what is it, what does it mean to you? So for, for me, um, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, hip hop really was the space that I was able to explore, experience, and experiment to find out who I was. It was the classroom that wasn't defined by walls. Hip hop provided that freedom uh, and, and it also provided a safe space, which almost sounds like an oxymoron given what a lot of people think about hip hop and some of it warranted, but I'm talking about experiencing hip hop outside of it being on the radio, honestly, outside of even having it where you could buy it in a record store. It was experiencing it in its elements, but most importantly, that element of knowledge of self, like just being able to see people that maybe were a few years older, or a few years younger, like everything, imagine growing up in the late 70s and early 80s in New York, where almost every time something came out, it was a first. You just was like, oh, this is what a group sounds like. Oh, this is what a posse track sounds like. Oh, what? These are the native tongues. What is that? And it's like, oh, this is Jungle Brothers. Like, what is that? Oh, like, what? Rock him? Like, okay, how are you talking about? mathematics and 5% is in a rhyme and I'm growing up a Christian, but hearing this, and it wasn't so much about a questioning of faith, but it just, I had never heard it packaged like that. And so when you're seeing that, and at that time, you don't really realize that you're part of something that literally is going to shape and change the world. You're just being fed what you want and then not even realizing that one day I was going to grow up and feel a an allegiance and a loyalty to begin to be a caretaker of it you know I think when you're little you're just absorbing but then mm. at some point you start to see yourself as a part of it and so now you feel like yo you represented me now it's my chance to represent you and All that's right, um, and that was where the shift took place. Here's what we're gonna do for you. All right. Um, with that, and we're gonna come back. I we're gonna stop come back to this caretaker caretaker of it part. Um, because that's what you got me thinking about. Like you got me thinking about like 
when did you know it was something that you had to be responsible for? Um, and since you mentioned groups, and since you mentioned uh, Brooklyn, I'm going to give you a shout out. And then we're going to move on. No doubt. Because I'm from the Bronx. But we're going uh -huh. to Brooklyn for a second. And everybody in hip hop, actually, you notice, know but y'all may not even know you notice. Know Pause for this for a second. If you don't think you know this, you know it from all songs. That guy go Brooklyn in the back. <laughs> Like, and I'm tired of him and go Brooklyn in the back of hip hop songs. MC, MI, people call me. Come on, Dow. All right. Like go Brooklyn sample. I'm going to say, if we was all in person right now and I said, where Brooklyn at? I bet you somebody <laughs> we would scream. We are everywhere Los. and anywhere at the same time. Oh, goodness. Keep, keep Los's mic muted. I don't want to hear him coming Look. through. <laughs> real real talk i want to go into um what you were saying about that and i do appreciate it i don't i didn't understand what was happening yeah i grew i'm from i'm 15 blocks away from yankee stadium i grew up on uh, 176th street so okay i saw something happening like we were going to jams and i had my older babysitters taking me to jams and there was these parties happening big big speakers bigger than yes. me and the yes. bass is booming and I'm kind of scared, actually, because everybody's dancing, but the bass is so heavy and everybody's bigger than me. And they got we have the same like we had a pro kids and all that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. we didn't have the definition of fresh. It was like, yeah, whatever you had, it's not what you had. It's what you did with it. Like how yes. you tied your shoes, like mm -hmm. how make sure how how, how yes. you made sure your, your creases was in the lead jeans. Yes. Like yes. Whatever you had, you, you had no money. But you had to walk out looking as fresh as possible. No it's doubt. also a mindset. Like, no matter yes. how poor I was, I knew I was going to present myself in the best way possible when I went out. But and, you, and, but you and, think and about it, in that space, you don't really even quantify poverty the same way. Like, you know, it's like, yo, for the most part, yo, you, you got your 69ers. If you had your Pumas, you had your toothbrush to make sure you was caring for your stuff. So there was mm -hmm. so many other ways to kind of amass a sense of self-worth and value that was apart from how much money you had. Because if it's if I'm 13 and it's me and my friends running around, okay, your mother has a job, my mother has a job, that's not our income, you know what I mean? So so for me to try to drone on you being poor, but we both live in the same project, you live on the fourth floor, I live on the second floor, that don't really make mm -hmm. sense. But now, if you're not taking care of what you got on, or you're not taking the time to like, okay, if you know you was rocking the Burgundy Lees, we both got Burgundy fat laces, why you ain't take the time the night before shine your white on whites up make sure you wash the tongue because when you take the blue ones off i don't want to see blue on yeah, the tongue to die on but i don't want the dye to, to spill over so these are the these are the ways that we were evaluating like that value as opposed to like yo your, your six figures and all of these like this we're talking about before money really right. started to be that main qualifier and so when you look back there was a lot of ways that you could be the fresh dude be like yo that brother d always got the fly haircut you see how he got his part and his waves is fresh and the do-rag don't leave no thick lines like that was it and it was like yo how did he do that so it was because always something it, else that we was able to that we had more control of how we yes. presented ourselves it's because when you got eight million people in the city you got to figure out how you're going to stand up so no you got to, you know, it's like, how can I be slightly different than the rest? And, you yeah. know, I'm glad that, you know, that's why I, one of the biggest things, even starting that big picture in, in the Met, like it was like kids not having uniforms or talking about we, you know, talking about whether they can wear hats or whatever. It's like freedom. It's like, I don't even have to worry about that. They can be creative in their own way, because I'm telling you, if they had to wear uniforms, they find a way to be creative anyway. Yep. And that's what we were. We had outlets to be creative during that time, even though 
You know, we were living in poverty and poor, we didn't realize it. And that responsibility to take care of a culture. We'll come yes. back to that in a second. I gotta okay. give a, when this came out, what did you think? What was you thinking about the world or like, cause this one is a little different. This okay. one now we. we... <laughs> Y'all don't know this is Blondie, this Blondie, is Rapture. Yes. I'm gonna yeah. go a little further. And, and this is the one that also had a video to it. Mm-hmm. And it was on uh, MTV. Yes. So when she, and then she was also rhyming. Bad yep. Five Freddy was doing a little robot. Yeah, Bad Five the Freddy. <laughs> Remember the hat? The yes, 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 hat? yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Like, All I, right, I, so now I, you're on MTV. Yeah, I, I honestly, I it, like, and keeping it real, that yeah. song, when it first came out, meant nothing to me. It mm-hmm. wasn't until being older and then looking back and kind of learning and putting pieces together. Because first mm-hmm. listen of the song, it's like, yo, who, who's this? Who's this white woman? That that really was that really was my initial response. Uh, even with Fab Fry Fab Five Freddy in it. Honestly, mm-hmm. it wasn't until KRS flipped that joint for Rapture that then you go back and it's like, oh, okay. This, but yeah, on the onset, like that didn't really mean anything to uh-huh. me and my friends at the time that it first came out. Now, for those that don't know, he's talking about Rapture. Rapture is important to hip hop. Because it's KRS One. KRS One is important to hip hop. It's the teacher. Speaking of which, <laughs> KRS One was known as the teacher. There was a yes, and this is. Let's just pause for this. One. We're gonna let him get a word in it too. Yeah. You don't stop. KRS one. Rock on. Yes, yes, y'all. You don't stop. KRS one. Rock on. I'm about to hit you with that traditional style of cold rocking. Giving options for head knocking, non stopping. Tip topping lyrics be dropping, but styles can be forgotten. So we bring back the raw hip hop. Just like the records and tapes you be copying. <laughs> Talk to me. So as you were saying, like KRS dubbing himself as the teacher and holding on to lyrics like kings lose crowns, but teachers remain intelligent. Like being able to just suppose everybody's worshiping the king. The king could lose their crown. They're not a king anymore. But that teacher with the intelligence and then even understanding his name, KRS, knowledge reigns supreme over nearly everyone. Everyone. That yeah. and then going to joints like you must learn. Like he really was and still is the teacher. But the thing that is so amazing is that if you close your eyes, even to this day, and the image of a teacher in most traditional spaces the mm-hmm. image of KRS would never come to mind. But I yet- I should've went to school to been like, yeah, that's right, my teacher is KRS one. One, like, yo, my, my, teacher got, my teacher got bars. And so you think about it at the time, you had people taking on pseudonyms like doctor, you know, and, and, and mm. this, that, the other, but he comes out like, yo, I'm the teacher. Like, do you really like sit down and think of, like, yo, what was you think? Because- <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't so. It could you say it's a, it's a like I'm a I'm a doctor. All right, that that means there's a level of expertise on it. That that's just more so like okay, you braggadocious. You just think you the doctor of what it is that you're doing. But for him mm. to be like, yo, I'm the teacher on an album 
that has guns and ammunition on it. The name of the album is Criminal Minded, and I'm a teacher. So, <laughs> so like, <laughs> you know, like, is it criminal minded because you Robin Hood and you steal it for the rich and give it to the poor? Is, mm, is the mm. determination of what's criminal up for discussion? But for you to say that you're the teacher and then 30 mm. years later, you still are regarded as the teacher? That's, that's but maybe no. that's part of the problem. Could He's be. still regarded as the teacher. And we need more of those. Like, yeah. I think I, I'm, I'm fortunate to have grown up in hip hop and listen to KRS one while in high school to juxtapose me sitting in history class thinking about Alexander the Great, scared to get on the hot seat for being asked five questions that I didn't want to answer, know about. Like, so it's like, we need more of those. Um, no doubt. And, 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 we like, need, and, and we need to identify the people who are operating as teachers without right. being self-defined as a teacher. I was going to say, I, I was going to say the same thing. I think what we, even in this, our audience right now, possibly define as a teacher at times, we always got to go through those ropes, um, that certified yeah. teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, <laughs> obviously, I mean, I know not everybody believes that, or we wouldn't have mentors in our, in our programs, but it's like, for our schools, how do we find those good brothers and sisters who are those teachers like the care of us one? Yes. You know, who may not have the brown, but has the mentality in the work. No doubt. Yeah. So. And then also when yeah. you identify yourself as, then you begin to live how you see yourself. Because he didn't say, I'm the teacher because he was identifying his profession. He was saying, I'm the teacher identifying his being. So mm. the question for even those who are certified are you certified identifying a profession or are you identifying yourself as such because you realize that is part of the essence of your being? And then we could go in a totally different direction and look at teaching as a spiritual gift. So the word teacher is so loaded that you got to ask yourself. So we're talking about expectations and revolution as the theme of this conference. Like, how do you even see yourself and define yourself as a teacher? Because when the classroom was gone, if all of a sudden structure as we know it is no more, are you still a teacher? Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you got to get it out of this world. With it. <laughs> as, as Elliot would say, like, they're out of sight. Sometimes, you know, when a student, that was an out of sight comment. We just relax gotta yourself. relax yourself because we're going to do a little bit more. Of it. Exactly. We we now we kicked it out. We 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 got out of the origins of hip hop and how it mm -hmm. affected us and the culture of it and even the teaching. And you see, we we got into to the teacher. Yeah. I didn't even have to do it, but here we go. The teacher, and we're talking hip hop ed. Okay. What, what is that? What what made you? I don't know. I don't know how did it start. <laughs> what so was I, I, really um, good with it? it and it, it, and it, anything you want to say in I relation to it? No doubt. No. So I'm your producer. I got the background beats while you do it. I got Rocky. you. So it hip hop ed as it's known now actually started when Christopher Emden. And his brother named Brandon Frame, who now runs an organization called the Black Man Can, they were on Twitter participating in a group chat about Jay-Z's book, Decoded. So this is 2010, like around November 2010. The two of them wanted to continue the conversation. So they came up with the hashtag hip hop ed to keep the conversation going. They then decided like, yo, this is kind of dope. Let's have weekly conversations. Back in 2010, people still went to music stores to get their music. Music came out on Tuesdays. So it was like, yo, these conversations are like fresh music. So every Tuesday, we will have a fresh conversation about 
hip hop and education. And so on the onset is Brandon Frame, Chris, Chris Emden, and Sam Seidel. Those three are really the main ones driving it. Uh, for me, it was March 2011. So the very first, the official first hip hop ed chat was November 16th, 2010. Fast forward to March 2011. I happened to get on Twitter for the first time, as God would have it, it's a Tuesday. I am with my mom, who is in the process of passing from pancreatic cancer. My mom died in July 2011. So part of jumping on Twitter was just kind of taking a mental break while I was at her side. Like, let's just see what's going on. I'm just learning Twitter. I come across a hashtag. It's like, yo, what's this? And I just start firing and I'm firing. I'm, I'm spitting comment. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. So Chris follows me and then we DM each other. And then we start to start to just have a conversation. And it was a Bronx, Brooklyn real hip hop conversation. Cause Chris is like, yo, who are you? Like, I should know you the way you firing on Twitter. I'm like, dog, I, you, I don't know you. Like, who are you? Like, <laughs> like, so, so literally it was this kind of verbal sparring that took place. Like if you watch it beat street and you, you got your position you about to break. And so then we just started talking. Cause he's like, yo, I, I work at teachers college and I grew up in Brooklyn. I left in 86, went to Howard University. I had never been to Columbia in my life. I had never known anything hip hop to ever be associated with Columbia. So we just started to talk. And that was how I started, you know, participating in the, in the, in the weekly chats. And so then him and I, we first met in that summer. And his thing was like, yo, I think you're so dope. I want you to come and guest lecture at my class. And I was like, OK, I just said, OK. But in my mind, I'm like, there's no way they're going to allow a brother who just has a bachelor's degree in business to come and lecture at this Ivy League school about hip hop. Like, yeah, OK, right. Remember, this is 2011, 2012. Now it's so normalized. But 10 years ago, this still was kind of avant garde. So he was a man of his word. And I came. And then from there, it's been every Tuesday we rock. And so now it's grown to just be this, this movement and this approach to education. And we just like to call ourselves the educational Wu-Tang. That mm. just like you, you see that Wu up there, but people branch off and do different things. But that Wu is like the bat signal that brings everybody together. So, the, you know, you'll see the hashtag everywhere. But, you know, when it's time to come together, we, we do our Voltron thing. We, we do our Autobot thing. And that really is what Hip Hop Ed is. And for me, I moderate the weekly chats. And, and I can say my connection being here in this space is because Sam introduced me to Tony Simmons from HSRA. And he became my mentor, my big brother in the game. And then he introduced me to Los who then introduced me to people like Chris Jackson and, and the See, rest everybody of the family. Networks. And so I, t so I tell my children all the time, yo, your network oh, is your net worth. You know what I'm saying? That's, nod, that, what's the, what's the word? That's, sure. that's that social capital, right? That's there. social capital. That's that networking, right? There. Yeah. So, but, and so literally, so now, and I say for the past three years, I've been self-employed largely in part to the power of relationship building from tweets. And I'm saying tweets back in the days when that joint was 140 characters, but you had to be nice to get a full thought across. Like this 280, you could write a small book. But back in the day, 140, you get your thought in, that joint turned red on you. You had to find a way to do this and still get a I want to, I want to, I want to, I'm not even <laughs> going to put a background to it. This is acapella. You just dropped, you just said, uh, you did it haiku style. You just basically <laughs> said, from a tweet yes you know what i'm saying yeah yes. your world your world it it, it it's it went from mob to like it, it, it spiraled or and, and affected your yeah. world in that way and 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 now traveling there's no place that i would go where somebody isn't familiar with the hashtag or countless times i will meet people 
And it's like, oh, you're TDJ6899. And it's like, yes, but my mother did name me Tim, but nice Tim to meet you. Me. But yeah. I get it. And and that's and that's just the power of it. But the beauty of it is I didn't even go into that thinking that I would ever need it the way that I rely on it now. So it just was being consistent in what it is that you do and just believing that people will recognize you for doing what it is that you do. And so I look back and I can say, man, you know, for 10 years, I've led this every single Tuesday. And there was only one Tuesday that I didn't do it because my best friend's mother passed and her funeral happened to be on a Tuesday night. So, I mean, shout out to my wife because my wife has been understanding, like sometimes like we was in Costa Rica on our anniversary and made sure that we had internet because Tuesday from nine to 10, I'm rocking because for her, she respects what I do enough. And she also knows that when I allow him to do that, I get the best Tim, mm. which is a whole nother conversation about having a, com- having a community that really understands and appreciates what you do so that when you're doing it, they know that you're in the process of doing what makes you live. So then they get to see the best you because they're allowing and supporting you doing what makes you, you. So, so what does it, what does it look like when you do the, uh, when we do hip hop, like, is there, cause I know you were talking, um, and let's, I know you mentioned revolution. I know you mm-hmm. mentioned big picture and this conference in particular, you know, in less than an hour, we got sister Sonia Renee Taylor coming on mic on the mic straight from across the uh, planet, you know what I'm saying? So, like, let's do some hip-hop bad then. Let's do okay. it. Let's so, a real, a real quick example, and it starts with just having the focus of thought to see scholarship within the culture. Mm. A lot of people, a lot of people use the culture to advance scholarship that they think exists outside of the culture. So which is why we were intentional in keeping it hip hop ed because it's hip hop first. That right, let me give you, that's yeah. Paul Rogers teachers right there. That's, that's no doubt. That's that good street knowledge. Keep it going. So, so July is minority mental health month. And so we was like, okay, let's do a chat that talks about that. But then we also just lost the diabolical. We just lost Biz Marquee. So it was like, okay, mm-hmm. we also want to acknowledge Biz. So from a hip hop ed lens, if you think about Bismarck, he actually is an exemplar of having a great mental health state of mind because he was unapologetically himself. He was so comfortable being who he was. Like he wasn't interested in being the best. He was just presenting you his best. So Mm -hmm. he could introduce the world to Big Daddy Kane, who was probably one of the greatest lyricists hip hop has ever heard. And he felt no competition. He felt no kind of way because Biz exemplified I am going to do me. And if I really do me and be my best, I'll be memorable. I'll be iconic and I'll be able to do everything that I'm setting out to do. So from a hip hop ed standpoint, you start talking about the components of having a strong or healthy sense of mind through the lens of what biz taught me. So we then would analyze a song like the vapors. And for those who are unfamiliar, the vapors is basically when somebody overlooks your potential. And then when your performance not only matches the potential that they overlooked, it surpasses it. They then circle back and try to be down with you. Like if they was down with you when they was just overlooking your potential. So how does that impact your state of mind? How many times have you been in a classroom where a teacher overlooked you, said you wouldn't be, And then now not only have you become, you now circle back as a teacher and then they want to then take credit and say you was in their fourth grade class. They they just, that's an, that's an example of the vapors. So we would break that down. And then 
you know, looking at songs like Make the Music with Your Mouth Biz. And at that time, you got Buff from the Fat Boys, Dougie Fresh, and Bismarck. Beatboxing. Yeah, let's let's do this. Let's, yeah. let's do this. Because we're going we gonna to pause. We're going to come right to beat. You stop before we go cross over to beatboxing. Okay. Since you said it. And, you know, just since people could hear it, you know, real quick. Yeah. Put on um, a little, put a little business. Let, let, let's let's really honor the man. There you go. Radio TV and even the press said what's the meaning of B-A-P-O-R-S. There the you go. This word without no doubt means nobody want to beat that one you're down and out. Now what you established and got a lot of money. Everybody want to be your buddy and honey. Like hmm. tall builders, they call skyscrapers. <laughs> Can you feel it? <laughs> <laughs> Catch the vapors. <laughs> yeah. What's going to do? And it's excellent writing. He said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. And yes. then break down how it affected my entire crew. And then he broke down each one of the members of his crew. Like, excellent. Exactly. So, so you know, and it's only because Elliot is one of the people in the few boxes that I could see. I'm sure he could probably write a verse about the vapors from the standpoint of what some people thought about when he started big picture to where it is now. And so then they circle around like, yo, when you was doing that thing at the Met, I knew one day you was going to cross the seas, man. And then Elliot looking at him like, really? Man. You caught the vapors? <laughs> you caught the vapors. <laughs> See, we gave, you a, we gave you a soundtrack now so you can, oh, you can <laughs> let people know what's good. <laughs> then we got this one. This one is fun right here. I always, this one got me, man. And I'm a, I think this will makes the best intro for any, like, first of all, it put me onto this, Fly Like a Eagle, Steve Miller and all that. Yes, yes. But and you know what's coming next. You know I'm about to play, but. Yeah. It's marketing. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Roxanne Shantae. <laughs> yep. Queensbridge. Mm. Yes, y'all are chiller like beaten. You could even dance or just have a seat and listen to the way you and, and so just to that, think about every affirmation that followed he's Biz Marquis. So imagine if our students had that level of confidence, like, yo, I'm Mr. Dynamite. Because you think about it, it's like what Khaled does is actually in the continuation of people like Biz. Like Khaled, he's like, yo, we the best. Who? We are. Said it was the we best the, before mm-hmm. nobody say. We the best. So it's like, okay, Biz is following James Brown, you know, the world's greatest entertainer. Like, who like I'm Mr. Dynamite. Like, so imagine if our students are coming into our classroom with that, and then you got on the walls, these affirmations, and it's like, you know, I'm Holly, and then it's like, bam, or I'm Chris, and I'm bam, and you know, I'm, I'm Donique, and it's bam. Like, what? Just the adrenaline that you feel imagining it should make you want to push to make that happen. Now we doing some hip hop here. I'm 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 there you keep go. rocking. I'm now we doing hip hop here because then you could do something like this. You, I mean, his this man's confidence, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's coming next. <laughs> Speaking of James Brown, like James Brown, which a lot of hip hop in the beginning sampled. I don't think she liked that at first. Yeah. So he figured out, oh, man, I can make a dollar. <laughs> but now, nah, Shane Brown, JB with the man. Yes. And we going right here. Yes. Hmm. Shout out to Gangstar. Guru. Yes, yes. Peace to Guru. Salute to Premier. <laughs> So he took that song I played before, mm-hmm. sampled it. And you think about it, Grandmaster Cass said it best. He said, hip hop didn't invent anything. 
hip hop reinvented everything. A little innovation on a on a flip. Yeah. A little, little flip, a little flip. So, Let's get so, so you yeah. know. And that's Guru's voice for people, you know. So a little hip hop ad, I, I, and and now I, I I saw you put, you know, for those that don't know, you gave me a little, uh, not a little, you gave me a nice list of songs to add to the playlist. Um, yeah, it's, it's revolution. You had some revolution stuff on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, put, I know put you up. mentioned big picture, so. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, you went back to the rest of development revolution. Uh, Common has a new song out called Imagine. Uh, I think about Rhapsody's song Crown uh, in particular, because in the song Crown, she just calls out the entire community as being responsible for the children. And there's a part where she calls out the block boys and she's like, block boys, block boys. Like, yeah, we need y'all too. And the beauty of it is, is that she didn't call them to change them. She called them to let them know that, yo, we see you and there's a role for you to play now in the midst of your interaction you may change but i'm not saying that you have to change before there's a role for you to play and so mm-hmm. and then um we also talking about expectations revolution uh there's a song called rich off pain by Lil baby Lil dirk and rod wave and a really quick shout out uh the first time i went to Tim's big picture school in Camden. I was doing a workshop with some young people and I always ask young people, give me three songs that if I listened to, I would learn something about you. And like half the class put me on this brother named Rod Wave. I had never heard of him at that time. But since then I just started listening to him and this whole notion of rich off pain. You mm-hmm. could think about that from the standpoint of traditional education is getting rich off pain. Like think of the millions of dollars that Mm. people write proposals for, for programs to do just enough. So they ain't really talking Mm. about liberation. They ain't really talking about turning, changing the trajectory. I just want to have enough blips of success to, to do the PR. And so, but that pain is still there. So it's the difference between covering the wound and healing the wound. And so you know, to have these artists speak about that, I just felt like it, that was a, a thought provoking song to drop. And this... There you go. Shout out to the homie speech. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we... I think we can't take this word lightly. Nope. I... It's a lot to decipher in hip hop. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Speaking, of, speaking of that, can we can we clear clear some things up? Sure. Um, cipher. What's a cipher? Please, please. <laughs> Well, Tell us what a in, cipher is. in the context of hip hop, a cipher is when uh, a circle forms where creativity is expressed more often is verbal. Uh, but you could have a dance cipher where you are circling, but it definitely is a continuum of creative expression that at some point may start off individual to individual, but then morphs into a connection. So for example, if it was six or seven of us, we in a circle and we starting off and we just saying our rhymes, but eventually a cipher is the listening and getting the cues. So then maybe the last line that Donique says becomes where I pick up. And so then the energy begins to move so if you're thinking about ciphering maybe on the first day of class the students don't really know each other so they just getting off what they want to get off but then over time you will start to see the positions 
that the students take in the cipher begin to change. You start to see, and then you can add dimensions to the cipher. You know, uh, there's a sister named Tony Blackman who used to do it where it's like, oh, I'm going to give you a line. And so now the cipher has to tell a story. So it's really about having structured, free flowing creativity with the objective of that creativity feeding off of one another to create something that could not exist without everybody participating in the cipher. Thank you very much. And, and, and also I think what needs to be known is that is what creates, like that creates that hip hop flow, that creates that yes. flow. And also you're saying things that you have, that is, it's not easy to understand. That's where the cipher comes in. You have to yes. decipher it. You have to figure it out. Same yes. things that when we used to circle up back in the days and before we were doing hip hop or, yes. and rapping. Like, yeah. like during my father's time, it was just rapping, but you exactly. might say something that might be more decoded. So not everybody needs to understand and be in your business, yep. no but doubt. everybody around in that circle knew might understand. It's exactly. They understood. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what this is about. Is yeah. So when we use it, I just want your people to use it and respectfully and understand what it yeah. means. And not, it's just not because you're circling up or it's just because yeah. you're talking or you're saying yeah. something. That, and it's something that is, is, is participatory. You know, like if there's a role for everyone to play. So it really is about synthesis, like everyone plays a part. And so there there's, so there's a level of relationship building that in that naturally and inherently takes place. So you have to build and work, work up to that. And since we are on that one, I guess we might as well talk about a couple of the elements of hip hop that we're not mentioning as much because in mm -hmm. hip hop, it is not rap. Yep. Um, hip <laughs> like it's not, they're not the same. Um, do you want to speak on it? I, I don't. No, I, I, I mean, de definitely when you think about uh, just some of the elements that don't get mentioned, if you focus on, you think, think about graffiti, uh, the graffiti, graffiti art. Um, as was talking earlier, like from a hip hop ed standpoint, graffiti art is a geometry class that's visual. If you think about angles, you think about proofs, you think about what's a right, what's obtuse, you think about dimensions, you think about the ability and understanding to know that, okay, if I hold the can at a certain angle, I get a drip. And then if I get closer, the line gets fat. And then if I pull back, it gets skinny. And then there's the science of color. There's also the math of dimensions that I sketched it first in a book. But then I went to a larger piece and I did it to scale. And, and then if we take it back to the origin, let's really get funky for a moment. They were doing this in the dark breaking the law like so i'm saying it to say that they were showing a level of mastery and genius in less than optimal environment so imagine what type of graffiti and creativity could come if you're in the comfort of a beautiful classroom space or a beautiful after school space where you don't have to worry about being chased where you could just literally be free with it so they were doing this, like honestly having to have eyes behind their back or have somebody there whose job was to be the lookout. So mm -hmm. that whole evolution of that art, we talked about break dancing, that's gonna be a part of the next summer Olympics, like to go from Beach Street to the Olympics. Uh, yes, th there you go. That blew my mind. I know if you're <laughs> listening and you can't, see it yes i'm looking at dondi's dondi white's piece yes uh children of the grave is number three and yes when i i grew up in the, when i saw that it blew my mind letters came to like letters came to life the colors yes. he are using are like pink green and light blue and and and, and let's break and let's break this and it's down. the whole train yard yes like I mean, so, the whole train the whole so, train so it's like okay let's 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 i'll, I'll be honest and maybe I, I know i'm not the only one i'm putting together a slide in google and i'm spending minutes 
like sliding things over to make sure that they're aligned. And if it's not, a, and then I use the little red line that comes up to, as a cue to let me know this is centered. This piece freehand is perfectly centered for the train car. Look where the end comes. Look, all of these letters are perfectly sized and you have art on the right and art on the left, the colors. And this was done in, the in dark. a train yard in the dark. With about a foot, no, about two feet, because trains are next to each other. So he yes. only has about three feet between the, the trains. Yes, yes. And he's climbing up while yes. doing it. Yes. So you're you're lining this, and then you're then you're doing the letters, then you're putting the colors, and then you're That's tagging. Fashion, baby. Like this is, come on, this is a dissertation. That's passion, baby. That's passion. So yes. I just had to just show, and I know I normally don't show things, but that 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 is beautiful stuff. No, I mean, I mean, and so you imagine the lessons that could be extrapolated just from that piece, mm -hmm. and then think about if you could imagine how Dandi felt, and everybody that was with Dandi putting that together, chilling, and it's an elevated train. And you see that train ride by. And it hits every burrow. And it hits every burrow because it's the train. Like, so people got to understand that, okay, graffiti in New York is the genesis of what we now call going viral. Like, I'm going to say that again. So, because some people didn't really catch that. To have a piece on the train that travels all five boroughs in the context of life at that time, that meant going viral. Just like getting a cassette tape of Treacherous Three battling Cold Crush and that tape gets dubbed and dubbed and dubbed and dubbed and dubbed and dubbed. Yo, and you dubbed. heard that tape? You heard that tape? You got, nah, I ain't got it yet. Nah, I ain't got, yo, yo, my man, <laughs> my, my, my man got it and he's supposed to be coming through. And then you sitting around waiting with the boom that box tape. for your man to come through That's with that viral. tape. That's viral, yes. That's going viral with, without a hashtag. So, you know, so just want to- And not all contact. viral is always good. That's good viral. Yes. Yeah, then yeah. there's the eight ball, then there's the eight ball jackets. Like then that, and that's, and that's how news, then there's news that goes so fast and is non-factual and non, is not as good. So, you yeah. know, not viral is, you know, he got yeah, but, but just, but, but that same, but concept, that, that, that same concept and that same desire has always been there. So then you can use that to give historical context. So sometimes our young people, they think they're inventing everything. And so then you can also be vulnerable to let them know that you've had certain experiences that are similar to be able to build relationships so that you can have, dare I say, deeper learning because they're looking at you differently and you're seeing them as a continuum as opposed to these young people are just coming in and it's my job to teach them. And we really have nothing in common as opposed to like, yo, I'm blessed with the honor and privilege to continue the legacy that I am a part of because we all are the flowers that have bloomed from somebody else planting the seed. And so we get to go into the garden and see our students as oh this is just another row of roses this is another row of lilies and so i'm doing for you what someone else did for me so when i get frustrated i remember how much i was frustrating them mm -hmm. and so it gives you a different temperament and state of mind and that is even in and of itself hip-hop so hip-hop is this continual reimagining so then okay I'm not going to come to you with last year's curriculum. Let's let's imagine something different. 
And if I have three sections of the same class, that doesn't give me the right to teach it all the same way because those are different individuals. Y'all may learn different. You may come up with something different. So just like if we was on tour, we ain't given that, even if it's the same playlist, you don't give the same show. Let's have some fun. Yeah. I, I was just, you, you, you struck me because you made me think that even if I, I, somebody tried to teach me hip hop, I wouldn't have been able to create the new stuff. Like mm -hmm. hip hop was continually new. So you can't teach me like, it's almost like you couldn't cause I was, everybody was looking at, for a way to break through or something original. You're yes. always looking, you're always looking for something different. Yes. And, um, and I think I'm gonna go to this. I'm gonna go, um, excuse that. I'm gonna go to this real quick. And uh, where we, where we going? I hear it in your voice. You, it's the setup. Where we going? Bit, it's a setup a little bit. It's a little setup. Um, because this, when this came out, this was beautiful music. Mm -hmm. But it's it's the flip, and you sometimes you just got to give the beautiful music and let the kids do the flip. <laughs> And we also gonna go into some some health too. But first, we gotta yes, get yes. a message across. We gotta get a message. So this isn't hip hop I'm playing. But if you know, then you know. If you some, don't know, some, just appreciate the sounds of M2 Man. Some people might be the results of this song. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a bad song coming next. But, ooh. but this song, with this song, when this came out, it was like. Who's them two man? But yes. man, this song is great. <laughs> I didn't know really what it was about, but this when this me, me neither, but but you just was riding with it. <laughs> you was right exactly, you were riding with it. Like and then somebody who knew about it would get on you like, boy, what you singing? You're like, oh, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Juicy fruit. I, like, I, I used to I, eat. It's, it's, it's a candy it's a rain. Gum. So I went yeah. everywhere. It's a gum. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. This album All right. Dedicated. Let's Gold go. Keeps, told me I never amount to nothing. Rewind. Rewind. Yeah. Take it back. This album is dedicated to all the teachers that told me I never amount to nothing. To all the people that lived above the buildings that I was hustling from that called the Wait, that's his first line. line. Yes, yeah. I'm about to say, we, 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 we was building on that. So I'm going to get that to him in 30 nothing. seconds. All the people. Ooh. Yeah. So, and that's what they do in hip hop. Sometimes yep. rewind. They told me I never yes. amount to nothing. <laughs> to all the people that lived above the buildings that I was hustling from that called the police on me when I was just trying to make some money to feed my daughter. Yeah, yeah. To all my peoples in the struggle. Who gets the last laugh? It's all good, baby, baby. Hey, yeah. 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 It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Salt and pepper and heavy D up in the limousine. Hanging pictures on my wall. Every Saturday, rap attack Mr. Magic Molly Mall. I let my tape rock to my tape pop. Smoking weed and bamboo, sipping on private stock way back when I had the red and black lumberjack with the hat to match. So, so if I can hip hop Ed this for one second. So, rap, so vision board. How many times we work with students about putting a vision board together? He's putting the stuff up on the wall. And, and, and Donique and I, we was just building that, that song was Juicy, which was the lead single on the Ready to Die album. So if you was really into hip hop, you might have heard him on Party and, and BS, or you might have mm -hmm. heard him with Supercat. But for the most, for most mm -hmm. of us, Juicy was the first time you heard this man. And so if you think about it, you've been what you want to do this, you want to come hard. And the first lyric, the first thing that he speaks, he's talking about a teacher. He is giving a critique of school. To all the teachers that told me I never amount to nothing. So this wasn't, this album is dedicated to the people that I was hustling with. This album is dedicated to the thugs in Brooklyn. This album is dedicated to the people that were shooting up in Latin quarters. This out, and think about it. The album wasn't initially dedicated to people that supported them. The album was initially dedicated to people that doubted them. So now let's talk about the state of being and mental health 
where you are dedicating to your doubters because there's nobody that's there supporting you. Then Close. I'm smoking. So now mm -hmm. it's self-medicating because where's the state of mind? First of all, the name of the album is Ready to Die, but there's a picture of a baby on it. We could, we could break that down and do a whole nother puzzle podcast on that. But I just wanted to let that resonate. Like, do you really understand how many people he was speaking for when it's like, I dedicate this to all the teachers that told me I wouldn't amount to anything? He probably got more fans with that line because people probably threw that cassette and was like, oh, he must have been in my class. And then that joint went through. Like I said, yeah, somebody said he spoke for an entire generation. And that was 94. The problem is we could play that song on the first day of school. We could play that song in 2021. And it's for another generation exactly going through the same thing. And we will say that the issue is with the generation and not with education. Strap him, Jim, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to end with, and there's an interesting pattern that I'm inter ending with, or that I've had throughout this podcast. I'm going to tell you in a second, a lot of the rappers that we've been playing are no longer here with us. Yes. Fresh for 1983, DJ Jam Master J. Shout out to Jam Master J. J. Yes. Yeah. The 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 this. It goes to one, two, three, and here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here so you got a uh, Jam Master J. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people think, oh, if rappers have passed away, they probably end up just getting, getting murdered. murdered. Yeah. Jam Master J and all of them. But uh, you mental, you also mentioned mental health. You also mentioned being doubted, which also goes into trauma and things like that. Um, and you see what Biggie remembered. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Biz Markie you talked about. Yeah. And then uh, who, who passed from diabetes. Yeah. All right. And then we had a, uh, oh, and thanks. I'm thankful Snoop had this in the commercial because now people know it. Yeah. Because ecstasy, ecstasy from this group is no longer with us. With us. Shot, shot G, no longer with us. Black and Rob. And this is, keep no on going. with us. DMX, no longer with us. Craig Mack, no longer with us. Uh, and they were not shot. Yeah, it's like we, we're naming individuals who health reasons uh, are no longer with us. And there's there's others. Uh, so when you're talking about health, which I know is one of, one of our pillars here, uh, is something that we have to be mindful of. And hopefully we can use these transitions as as warnings you know we talked about big pun and he actually put in the lyric like yo i lost 100 pounds i'm trying to live and you know he's no longer he's no longer with us and so a lot of these things are preventative but also a lot of these things are linked to the environments that they are living in so we got to find a way to bring this health message in a way that doesn't come across as punitive and beating the person down for the position that they find themselves oh, oh. in. Jay Dilla. Yeah, Jay Dilla. Uh, Fife Dog Diabetes. Yes, yes, the funky diabetic. Like, so we gotta really get it right. I, yeah. heavy, heavy D. Yes. Let me start from the beginning. We so, yeah. Uh, heavy D, overweight lover. Yeah, and that's part of the issue. Like we, we buff, buff. celebrate Prince Marky D, two thirds of the Fat Boys. <laughs> and and this song is called "The Overweight Lover Is in the House." In the house, yeah. 
How do you get known? How do you get that attention? We, I mean, the group was called, what was it? The Fat Boys. Uh, how many of the Fat Boys are even alive right now? There's only one. Ready Rock. Ready Rock is the only one. Buff passed, and we just lost Prince Marky D a couple of months ago. So there were three Fat Boys. And I don't, I don't even know how many made 50 or a little over 50. They sure didn't make 60. I, I know Buff passed way before 50. I think Prince Marky D might have been 52. Uh, and Ready Rock is, is still alive. Um, Biz was 57. DMX, I think, was 51. Um, Shock G, I think, was about 57. Black Rob was 51. Craig Mack, I don't think he had reached 50. So in the grand scheme of things, you know, you're talking about relatively young. And so then when you add on the social factors and you add on violence, this is why the narrative of young people is one that is absent of being old. So for them, 18 is almost time middle This age. is Fife, dog, for those yeah. that don't know. Yeah. yeah. But please kick it. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, so it's like this, this, this is this compressed reality so you know it's like because for a lot of us we had to see what it's like to grow old and and age gracefully so that we have something to aspire to you know it's like do you think about young people today do they get to see what a cool 50 looks like what a cool 60 looks like what a fly 70 looks like what is it like to be with family where like, yo, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of this or, you know, like if they don't ever get that, what, and then you're in school and you keep saying, I'm preparing you for life. I'm preparing you for life. And it's like, <laughs> what life are you preparing life. me for? Because, and then it was, um, it's like, what life are you preparing me for? If you don't understand the life that I'm living. It's like Jay Z songs. Can I live? Like it's like, yes. can I live right now? Because I'm not yeah. guaranteed life later. Yeah. So like G G Herbo, a brilliant young brother out of Chicago. His latest album is called Twenty Five, because he literally like, yo, I didn't think I was gonna make it to twenty five. So he titled his latest album Twenty Five. Like, think about, think about the state of mind when you really like, yo, dog, I made 25. In most communities, you planning way past that. You got trust funds that you don't touch until you turn 25. He made an album called 25 to just celebrate what it means to be 25 and then, then had to acknowledge almost in roll call fashion, how many of his partners didn't make it. And I think what we also think about it, you know what people, when people really think about it, imagine if they were all Jimi Hendrix. Imagine if they were all like really, like, I get mad when I think about Jay Dilla. Like, that's yes. when I'm like, Jay Dilla's beats. Like, any rhyme, anything, he had, he had immense talent. Yep. He, he's on some Beethoven level. Best Thanks. producer in hip hop. Like, and who, nobody hardly knows his name and he died he died early lupus yeah. like it's always something like let's just think about if we think about ourselves if we think about where we were those who are old enough 25 years ago what were our thoughts what was our outlooks on life what were we into and then fast forward and by god's grace we're still here we're thriving 25 years later could you imagine what a 50 year old Tupac would be in 2021. We lost him in 96. We lost Big in 97. So right now, Pac would be 50 and Big would be 49. Like, can you like you think about 20s? And for and for us brothers at 25, the, the frontal lobe is just starting to get hard. Sorry, ladies. We 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 lag behind y'all a lot in that. So just imagine, but he gave enough of the what he was thinking thinking about like yo he had songs talking about we wasn't ready for a black president on changes way before obama and then when you think about the kickback that came after obama we could say maybe he was right so imagine what a 50 year old tupac would be dropping on us right now in 2021 
or, or to the police, please try to see there's a million MFs thinking just like me, only God could judge me. Like, yes. I mean, like, could you imagine the, the thug life tattoos that would be out right now? <laughs> like, like, like real talk. Could you, could you imagine yeah. like, yo, I'll, I'll, I think, I mean, salute to Stacey Abrams. If she could pull together 800,000, I think Pac could do like 1.2. <laughs> I mean, just, just on his trajectory and his mindset. And what Stacey Abrams did was amazing and a miracle. But I, I like, I like, because as I get older, I think about some of those individuals. Like you talk about Jimi Hendrix. I think Jimi Hendrix died, he was like 27 or something like that. And so when you, so when you think about like creatively, and artistically, some of these individuals, we lost them before they really hit their prime. It's like, who mm. knows? Like, could you imagine Jimi Hendrix as a visiting professor someplace teaching? So, yeah. But we're going to have to keep on imagining something different than this. So, exactly. and I think one thing we should think about is we just like we're talking about that big picture with health. This is why we're taking a second to give you some data points. Half of the rappers that have, have died. First of all, too many rappers have died early. That yeah, represents too many. like black men in America. Like there's just too many dying early. And then half of those that have died at least have died from health related issues. Mental that are preventable. Issues. That are preventable. Yes. yes. So that's something that needs to be known from i mean too many too many health to related issues to name so yeah. we gotta imagine something differently and we gotta think like hip hoppers um i i used to steal stuff from like when creating the met it was like oh are we gonna put on a shirt the world is yours all right now <laughs> now nas took that from scarface but i took that from nas like exactly. it's like anything that it was freeing how are we gonna think about um how students think Hmm, I learned about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, 360 degrees of knowledge. Hmm, let's, let me apply that to what we're doing at the Met in the big picture. Like no half, a lot of the stuff that is foundational at the big picture that I, we've done with Elliot and then and some of the other is foundational stuff that actually is, is, is creative in hip hop. It, it relates to it because the nature of hip hop is surviving and thriving. It's, it's about making a dollar out of 15 cents. But, it's about taking that beat and making yeah. something out of it. But I was gonna say, you know? but you, but, but Donnie, you had the space to bring your mm -hmm. whole self in, mm -hmm. and so by you bringing your whole self in, you brought in what spoke to you, and the students were able to feed off of that because you present. I, I, without being there, I know you presented it with a passion that they knew that this wasn't just a tagline that, oh, this sounds good. So this is just going to be our theme. Like you lived it. So by you living it and being the embodiment of it, it causes them to just be drawn in. And I think that's something that can't be overstated. That's like, we are really the first partakers of whatever it is that we think we're going to give to somebody else. That mm -hmm. I can't, if I'm not the embodiment of hip hop ed, I can't be the visionary officer of hip hop ed. Like this can't be a job. This can't be just to add a line to my resume. This is something that I have to determine whether it's for a season or whatever. This is actually who I am. And so what and now me, what I, me, you know. I'm going to take it, you right there and I'm going to stop you right there. Okay. Brother. This has been fun. Yep. And it, would you be in the visionary of a hip hop head? I think if anything that we're saying that I'm hearing from you is everybody needs to be allowed the students to be visionaries for their own life. Without you know, a doubt. What just what yep. ingredients and what to put in. Give yes. them the albums and let them play with it. You know, let yes. them play and figure see, things see out. They, Don't tell see what them they come up with. How to do it. Let them do it. Yeah. And on the note, on that note, because I know we're going to get out of here right now yep. at this very minute, but 60 seconds in it, fourth upon him, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it. But I want to thank you for coming on ah, in and rocking with us. And thank you for having me. And it's always a pleasure. And I love when the whole fam come together. 
You can look outside and judge how you feeling according to the weather. I told y'all we connect like Lego blocks and we creating this foundation. We gonna change the whole generation because for us, education is not an occupation. We have rewritten the emancipation. We take our 16 bars and rewrote what they tried to flip in a trick in 1776 because we represent the remix. We make the music with our mouth, whether it's from the West, the North, the East or the South. Thank you for this opportunity. Peace to the brothers and the sisters, and we out. Puzzle Pieces Podcast.